He talks about his relationship with Mama Clinton, First Lady Hillary, discloses secrets of his struggles with drugs, suicidal thoughts, and the law. It's all in growing up Clinton, the lives, times, and tragedies of America's presidential family. Roger Clinton is here. Roger, welcome hey, Roger. to the show. Thank you, sir. Thanks okay. for having me here. I saw your brother last week because uh, I, it, it, they had the unveiling of the George Bush portrait. I mentioned this on the show the other night, but I went down because um, having been a friend of uh, President Bush, as you know, yes, sir. Uh, the cabinet and many of his close friends were invited. And I had a chance to, I shook hands with your brother last week, and Hillary was, as they stepped up, they have this thing where the Marine officer introduces you, and he said, each person in the receiving line is introduced. And the guy said, how would you like to be introduced to the president? And I said, tell him his worst nightmare is here. <laughs> and your brother and your brother heard it, and he looked over and he said, "Roger, how are you doing?" Ah. He was very he was very gracious, and I compliment. You know, I, I was surprised at uh, the first lady's ability to do extemporaneous speaking. She talked first at this thing before mm -hmm. I think she talked, and then President Clinton talked, and then President Bush stood up and talked. Uh, and and uh, Hillary did hers totally ad lib for almost five minutes. I was surprised at how well she did. Not that she, I would expect her to do badly, but I mean, she was nearly perfect. I was she is, uh, she's very capable yeah, in really. conversation, in communication, uh, spontaneity. You're kind of a wild man in that family. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, have you've been, you've been yes, up sir. and down. Now you've sort of settled down. You have, yes, uh, you're married and got a ba new baby. And Beautiful baby boy. Has that calmed you down any? Absolutely. Has it? Actually, the, the calming process, Roger, took place uh, uh, several years ago. I would say seven or eight years ago. When did you do time in jail for drugs? What year? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Yes, sir. I okay, did so you were what, your late 20s? or what? Well, I just turned 30, 39, 30? so I was in my late 20s, yes, late sir. Late 20s when mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. So you grew up late? Yes, sir. I absolutely did. Now, is that because, uh, and, and let me understand this, your mother was also President Clinton's mother. Yes, you had different fathers. His father was killed early when he was very young. His father was killed before he was born. Before he was born. Uh, my biological father was, was Big Brother's father uh, several years before I was born. So that was his daddy. He didn't even know about his biological father until years later into in, What did in that do life. to him when he found out that this guy who <clears throat> He saw roughing up your mother and you kids wasn't really his father. That would make me angry. Did that upset him? You know, I, I don't really know, Roger. That's an interesting question. I've never sat down and, and, and asked him that point specifically. I know that, that in my mother's book, it is documented that, uh, and, and that Roger Clinton Sr. was the father that Bill loved and the father that Roger Jr. hated. Um, so I don't think it ever did anything to him because he loved, he loved Roger. Why did he you hate Daddy. him? Why did you hate him? Because I thought he was a mean man. I thought despite mother's constant telling us that, uh, constantly telling us that, that he was a good man, just a sick man, that he wasn't a mean or a bad person. He wasn't a bad person, he was just sick. But I couldn't comprehend that. Uh, alcoholism really wasn't discussed, certainly uh, in any depth back then, really. So I, I tend to think mother was sort of prophetic back Did then. Did he treat you differently than your brother Bill? Because Bill was older? Yes, sir. I believe I, so. I, I heard stories that he, that your brother Bill, and I, I, I'm going to say this, <clears throat> we're talking about President Clinton, and I don't mean any disrespect, but because we're talking family here. Did Bill had to break up fights in the home yes, and that sir. kind of stuff? Is that true? Yes, sir. There, there were several occasions, but the one specific one uh, that I certainly document in my book um, is that where you went running across the yard in yes, your underwear sir. and you said, uh, I, when I first and read I, that, I thought that was like last week. And I said, no, no, Roger's yeah. better. He's not running around his underwear. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, that was when no, you were sir. a little boy. Yes, sir. It was when I was in, I had just come in from grade school that day. What happened? Uh, well, you know, like clockwork back then in those days, uh, my father would, if he did come in to the house, uh, nine times out of ten he was drunk, or at least in my mind. That's what that's what I remember, and uh, because it seemed like he came, he was drunk all the time, and but he wasn't necessarily violent all the time. But he was always 
just sort of outrageous. And, and there was always that probability, not possibility, but probability. So there was a violent. sense of danger in the home all absolutely. the time? Absolutely. And I was frightened. I was absolutely terrified. My brother, I think, because of, of being 10 years older, he comprehended a lot more of what was going on. Uh, he understood what mother was telling us a lot more. I was strictly frightened. And every day when he would come in, I would run back to my room and I'd hide because it scared me and I didn't know. And this one particular day, the regular noises, the routine, you know, I heard the noises out in the garage. I went back to my bedroom because I knew it was my father coming home. Uh, and, you know, I would go home, I would go back in the bed, I'd sit in the bed and hope that he didn't hurt mother every single time. And Did he, he hurt her ever? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He hurt her several times. And, uh, but I, I guess that I was always hoping that it would never progress, you know, that it would never get worse than just hurting her. But he, he tried to stab her on that particular day. And, uh, you went to get your brother? Yes, sir. It was, it was absolutely the most traumatic vision that I had ever had and, and hope, hopefully will never have another thing, anything like that. But I saw this, the scissors extended and I ran next door to get my brother. We'll pick up the story. We have to take a break here. This is Roger Clinton. The book is Growing Up Clinton. Stay with us. My guest tonight uh, is a singer. He's an author, and his brother has a job, too. Roger Clinton is our guest. You know, uh, one of the things that I've always uh, uh, respected is the way you talk about your brother, the fact that he always helped you as a younger brother mm -hmm. and that he looked out for you kind of, and I've always uh, kind of respected that. Tell me what happened when you, the knife was poised, as we were saying before the break. What happened? Well, um, Do you think your father would have stabbed your mother? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I just saw those scissors up in the air. Uh. And I remember looking down the hall, and I was about 50 feet from where it was taking place. It was in the laundry room. And I saw my mother bent over backwards, and my father had one hand on her throat and one hand extended in the air. And, you know, and I, honestly, when I ran next door, that's what I was thinking. I really thought that I wasn't going to make it in time. I didn't think we'd be back in time. And I just um, I sort of panicked and ran across, ran next door. What would your uh, brother Bill do? Like a, like a shot, like a shot out of a cannon. He grabbed me. We ran back over to the house. Um, we just crashed in the garage door and ran into the kitchen, which was adjacent to the laundry room. And uh, he he hadn't done anything yet. You know, our dad didn't hadn't done anything, hadn't overreacted, I guess. And my brother just yelled, made you know, got his attention, and and broke broke what was going on. My father immediately, you know, changed his focus. I mean, certainly he had no focus really. But uh, my brother grabbed my mother out of the laundry room and put me behind his back with one hand and mother behind his back with the other hand and looked at my father for the first time and said, uh, looked at our father and said, uh, Daddy, you won't hit her. You will not hit her and you won't hit us anymore. No more. Do you still hate your father? I, um, I don't know if I've ever really dealt with it, you know. I... I I know I still hate what he did. I, I, I've had trouble, Roger, over the years trying to, even though I've grown up and, and, and have matured in, in a, at least enough to know the difference and, know, and to know what mother was trying to tell me in so many different areas. But that one particular area where she kept trying to drill it into me that he was not a bad person, he was just a sick person. I still get that vision of those scissors and it doesn't alleviate the pain any, or it really hasn't over the years, to picture a, me, a bad person doing that or a sick person doing that. And, uh, and there's some block there, obviously. You're a religious person? I'm a spiritual person. Yes, sir. I'm a very, very spiritual person. I believe in God. Uh, I talk to God all the time in my own way. No, sir, I do not carry the Bible. I do not go out and spread the good word to people. Well, the essence of, of, of religion is <clears throat> forgiveness. Can you forgive your father? Yes, sir. I, 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 think, I think, actually, I must have forgiven him because I've been able to lead a productive life and turn my life around and I am happier than I've ever been and it is still emotional but when I talk about my father I don't have any hatred toward it anymore 
but it's not because I, I don't think it's because I really sat down and dealt with that hatred. There, there's criticism of your brother as president of the United States as, as, as if he has a fault that he tries to please everybody too much. Yes, that sir. he, uh, he waffles, he changes his position, he's, he, you know, he talks to one person and then he says this is, and the person walks out thinking he really agrees with him. And, and then the next person comes in, it's slightly different, he's something else. Yes, sir. Could that have anything to do with this upbringing where he's, you know, he had to try to please this you know dysfunctional father? It's real interesting that you say that. Let me share something with you because along that line right there, mother used to tell, used to tell me at least, and I'm sure she also conveyed it to big brother because we've had talks about this years ago when he was governor. We lost an election as governor in 80. We were reelected and stayed there. But one of the main things, certainly there's never just one thing that causes a defeat or a victory. But in this case, there was a very fine example of what Mother used to always tell us was a, what, character flaw or just a characteristic of the two boys. And that was, for example, if there are ten people in a room and nine people either like us personally, support us politically, whatever the case is, if there is one person that doesn't, we will spend more time with that one person than the other nine. Not because it's necessary for all ten to like us or support us, but it's necessary in our minds to understand why that one person doesn't like us or support us. Consequently, we alienate ourselves from the people from our support group. And it's a real interesting phenomenon. That is an interesting phenomenon. All right, uh, we have another segment here. Uh, we're with Roger Clinton. The book is Growing Up Clinton. Uh, stay with us, and we're going to talk more about this... Uh, Strange and fascinating life, actually. What's your dream? Is it to be uh, Elvis or to be a guy that big in the music business? Would you like my to do that? My overall dream? Yeah. My overall dream is to be the best dad I can be. Really? The best dad and the best husband I can be. Well, i got to give you credit for that. We've always said on this show that we think parenting is the most important issue in this country. And uh, the fact is, if you really believe that, then... Uh, the rest then of my life right. is devoted to my son. Is that right? Yes, sir. Good. Without question. Well, stop screwing around getting a bad name. Man. I thought you haven't done anything bad in a while. No, you? sir. You, you don't. You don't give people you ammunition; gonna... they won't shoot you. <laughs> 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 Who told you? Did you have a brother ever sit down and say, "We, you know, I'm president of the United States. Will you knock this stuff off?" No, sir. Not since president. But okay. yes, sir. You can replace that with governor. And yes, he sir. Did? He did. He did. Yeah. When you because I needed coke. some waking up. Yes, sir. Yeah. I was a sick. I was a sick boy. Mm -hmm. I was a sick boy, and I, I didn't want I to hear grow Hillary up. went at you a couple times. A and she needed to, but at the time, I, I wouldn't have told you that. Oh, she's a tough customer, she's, though, when she wants to. She's very tough. She's very, very tough. We butted heads for years. In retrospect, uh, I've finally seen that it was mainly because I was fighting inside. And amazingly, if you quit fighting on the inside, all the fighting on the outside will stop. Are Hillary, you happy? Hillary's a, br a brilliant woman, and I'm very proud that she's that she's my sister-in-law. I right. really love her, yeah. yeah, and Chelsea. It wasn't always that way, though, was No, it? sir. No, sir. Um, I, but uh, you know something? I, I, I'm not sure if it was just because it was Hillary, or I, I think sometimes it could have been anybody in that position. You know, I didn't have a dad, basically, growing up, and Bill my brother was everything. Dad. Yes, sir. Give me three words to describe your brother. What are the first three words that come to mind? Bill Clinton is? Hardworking, honest, reliable. He's having trouble getting, not the hard-working part, but yes, some sir. of the honest and reliable. He has trouble getting yes, that because people say he changes his position. He, yes, I mean, sir. That, those two don't come through. You know him as a person. Hillary, yes, three words. Strong. Two. Brilliant. Compassionate. Okay. She showed me a bag of chocolate chip cookies one day and brought them into me and said, see, I'm, I can bake I'm chocolate I'm not chip sure cookies. if I would have said domestic in that, in that grouping, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> well, I ran into her. I ran into her to, at, a, at a meeting here in New York, and she spotted me, and she dragged me over and showed me her cookies and said, see, I can cook. It was right after that incident 
during the campaign when somebody, she said, what do you think I'm going to do, stay home and bake cookies or something? Yeah. So, Can I say one more thing sure, about, about Big Brother and Hillary? Yeah. You know, the, you know, I think the overall main characteristic, the, the most positive thing about the two of them, they are great parents. My brother I, I, I is a wonderful that. father. I, 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 I give you that. I've said that mother. actually on this show, that I think that, uh, and that is not an easy job. I lived, no. uh, um, you know, through the Bush administration. I watched, you know, Richard Nixon once said to me, I asked him what the worst part, this, this, is, this is an interesting thing. He once said this to me. He said, what's the worst part of being you in politics? And he said, the hardest thing is coming to the breakfast table in the morning with my two daughters and having to explain to them the ugly cartoons of me in the newspaper. And uh, you, you wouldn't expect that from Richard Nixon, you know. Uh, but we sometimes forget these are real people doing real things, living real lives, and they got to come down and look at themselves in the paper, too. So and that tough. is sort of my basis of saying that my brother is honest, and he is, and he is very honest. But the bottom line is, no matter what position he holds, He's a human being. And there is no person on this face of this earth that is honest across the board. What so are you, what's he going to do after he leaves the presidency, in your opinion? I know that he's going to still teach. And he's always going to teach. And he's always going to learn. And he's always going to try and lead. It won't be in public office, certainly. But, uh, and, and in my heart and in our hearts, we think that it's going to be until the year 2000. But regardless, if it's 96 or if it's 2000, uh, he's not going to stop teaching. He loves children. He wants to look back more than anything in this world. He wants to be able to look back years from now and see that he made a difference to better this country, here in the country, throughout the world. Uh, I think he's going to have his political number retired. Does he have any sense? I mean, he, he really has floated between 40 and 50 percent in the popularity polls for three years. And he's never really he bolted up there for a while and so on. But yes, his numbers are not good. His numbers have not been really good. Yes, sir. Does he have any sense of why that happens? Does he, why does he think that happens? Possibly because of what you were saying earlier. Because of sometimes when you try and please too many people, um, and I'm saying this again from my heart. I, I've not had a sit down with him and sure, discuss this specific I understand. thing. But in my heart, I think that you really hit on something. I think that sometimes that, that if you try and please too many people, that appears to be waffling when actually and I, we don't intend for it to be waffling. And it goes back to what I was telling you earlier, you know, from years well, ago. Well, good luck with the book, Roger. Thanks, i got to wrap Roger. it here with the thank time's you, up. And I thanks to Cindy Lauper. Uh, thanks to Roger Clinton for being on. And uh, this is the book, Growing Up. Clinton. It's out in the bookstores right now. You can pick it up. It's there on your screen. And uh, we'll see you again on